Hey, Scorpio, Pluto, your ruler, is very active this month, but it wants to bring you magic and wonder. And the other main focus of this month is your intimate, romantic, one-to-one -one relationships or business partnerships or even a best friend, but any anyone you have a one-to-one -one with. There's going to be a major uplift and transformation in those areas. Some relationships are ending, some are beginning, but there's a journey for you to find true happiness and a real sharing with the people that you have that intimate time with. But let's start at the beginning. Well, actually, the beginning even talks about that because we have Venus, the planet of love and abundance, in the same zone, your relationship, one-to-one -one relationship zone, harmony and all of those things. And it's square, which is challenging, your ruler, Pluto. And you're thinking about home and family. How does home and family and my relationship come together or lack of, whatever your situation is, and it's like trying to find a way forward. Now, the good news is, trust me, Pluto is bringing changes so that you can find nurturing balance and happiness. Those changes may be external changes, those changes may be changes in the way that you think, which suddenly enlighten you to be able to make the changes that you need. It is full on. It's likely this month that actually you're gonna make a commitment of some kind but first of all, you have to do the work and see the light in what or who you want to commit to. There is a very powerful new moon in Taurus, which is conjunct Uranus, the, pa the planet of the surprise, surprise and excitement and genius. And also with Jupiter, the planet of good fortune. Um, so on that new moon, it's a chance to cast out your fears do you have any fears around intimacy? Are you holding yourself back? If you are celibate or not into relationships, is there a part of you that is not being as intimate with your best friend as usual? Is not really sharing your power with somebody that you're working with? You have the opportunity to utterly shift that and find the common link between you and a support system. And it's a beautiful thing. It changes things for you. You're going to feel seen and you're going to be able to express yourself. And we doubled down with that energy on the 13th of May when Mercury retro shadow ends, thank God. And Venus, the planet of love and abundance, is sextile Saturn, the lord of responsibility. And that is, again, all, most of the vibes this month are to do with relationships, pleasure, happiness, and how you relate to other people. So... This sex style is saying you are making a commitment, but you're making a commitment where you feel safe. As Scorpios, as you probably heard and experienced, sometimes don't feel safe. It takes a lot because you're an old soul and you're very, very deeply sensitive. If somebody hurts you or life hurts you, it's very difficult for you to open up and trust. This month is about allowing you to do that on your terms and then forming connections that are stunning. You're also feeling, thanks to Mercury going into Taurus, that you want to compromise a bit, that you want to listen and be listened to. And again, that changes your relationships. Also, there is a lot of abundance coming your way. Uh, maybe someone's giving you an idea of a skill that you've got and what you can do with it. And then a door opens for you. But certainly, Jupiter is bringing in good things and you have the confidence to get it on the 18th when mercury squares pluto there may be some decisions you want to make and it doesn't agree with with someone you live with or a family member but you're determined to do it anyway but the key is that you're talking about it in a way a compassionate way that enables you to get what you want without cutting off and that is the key to communicate this month without cutting off and then ah uh, magic is coming on the 20th of May, the sun enters Gemini and that vibe changes and you're back to being your sizzling, dynamic Scorpio self. You're very intuitive. You spot things and you can put yourself in a position of power, not power over, but you can be very powerful this month. And the peak of that experience is on the 23rd, which happens to be the full moon in Sagittarius, which is sextile your ruler Pluto. And there could be something fabulous happening around a move or a change in dynamics around your home. But fundamentally, the most important energy of that day is when Venus, the planet of love and abundance, and Jupiter, the planet of good fortune, meet. That's one of the best days of the year. It's one of the best transits we can have. 
you feel hope, you feel loved, and you can see your way through. You're very intuitive. You're super psychic, thanks to Venus sextile Neptune and Jupiter sextile Neptune. Through your intuition, great happiness could come. Often, the difference between Pisces and Scorpio is they're the most, the two most intuitive signs. But Scorpio is almost like, like you have a survival intuition, right? So you're really good at spotting, feeling, and sensing anything negative to protect yourself. But sometimes you get caught in that mode and it's really important and you have a golden opportunity to turn that intuition to sniffing out wonderful things that are going to bring you joy and golden opportunities. And on the 23rd, turn that intuition into looking for a fabulous experience, solution, gut instinct. Uh, the 23rd, also Venus moves into Gemini and then Jupiter on the 25th moves into Gemini. And again, you could be the best you've ever been with all the skills that are within you. You can shine. All of those, the marvellous gifts that you have can come to the surface and can bring to you great things. You can dazzle with your power, but it's a new power. It's a power filled with love. It's a power where you know the possibilities of what you can achieve. And it truly is amazing. Also on the 25th, we have Venus trying Pluto. So again, you are being loved and shown the way. Take care, gorgeous, and I'll speak to you soon. So here is the deck. I love the box. Got some of the tarot heroes on the front that are in my deck, which I'll tell you about later. It is flipped up. How fabulous is that? I love that. And then you have the little booklet here. Little nuggets of information about each card. Here they are. Notice the gold. The fool. The magician. The high priestess, which is so important because it is Pamela Coleman Smith. She was the illustrator of the original Rider Waite. And I have three lovers cards. The chariot, strength. The Hermit, various heroes here. This is Anime Wong. So I've got this leaflet that comes with a pack. It gives you one line of straight to the point wisdom about it. But this is the book. And I'm so pleased with it because what I aim to do with this deck is to inspire your own psychic ability, but also to empower you and uplift you every day with the message of the card. Let's take a look inside. In it, we've got the meanings and readings. All my knowledge is in this book, all my love and all my heart. I talk to you about my journey and I talk to you most importantly about how to dive in and learn the tarot really quickly because that's the way I roll. Very easy guide. I talk to you about reversals and how to empower yourself and feel the love of the tarot. And then there's a little space where you can do your readings. And at the back, really importantly, I talk to you about all the card characters, the amazing things they did in the world to inspire us. Just to give you a taster, let's pull a card to see what we've got. Well, that is a great card. The Nine of Cups, the Wish card. The most basic interpretation of the Nine of Cups is that you're being given a massive cosmic yes. This book is my life's work. I've been doing tarot basically from when I was born. It's been a lifelong passion and you could, you're always learning when it comes to tarot. And I've tried to put everything I know and and all the magic and how you can learn quickly. You can get them from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and potentially order them from your local bookshop and support your local bookshop. These carry my heart and my soul, and I thank you for being on this journey. You inspired me to do it, because I wanted to have a inclusive deck. So I thank you for being my inspiration.